What's going on, Washington fans? What's good, Washington fans? Uh, happy Friday. I just want to shout out my Elite Channel members. Shout out to Kenny Man Fitness. Shout out to DC Bay. Shout out to On the Warpath. Shout out to Oscar Josue Montel. We had a blast on the stream uh, on Tuesday. Yeah, we had a blast. We was joking around, man. We had a blast, man. We had a blast. So shout out to them. Three of them boys. <laughs> so... Um, once again, I hope, hope everybody has a good weekend. So the trade deadline is looming. It is coming up on Tuesday. We got to make some decisions here or just not make any decisions with the, with the, or not make any moves at all. But here are some trades that I, I think Washington could make that we could make before the deadline. I think we do need to, I think we should trade Dwayne Haskins sooner than later. Um, Jeremy Fowler, he reported, um, that Dwayne Haskins would rather want to trade sooner than later. I'm paraphrasing from the report, but I really think it's time to move on. And there's some teams that I think would uh, take, take Dwayne Haskins with open arms. I think it's, it's been a toxic situation with the stomach virus and, um, you know, him being demoted to third string, him breaking the virus protocols, just things off of the field that have transpired in the last few weeks. Uh, the leaks coming out from both sides, leaks coming out from Rivera. It's just been a, it's just been a nasty situation um, since he's been demoted to third string. Um, and, and before the Ravens game, honestly, given the cutoff point thing and the uh, ultimatum for the game, the pop quiz during the game, it's just it was it was a bad marriage. Uh, he's just not Ron Rivera's guy. I think Dwayne Haskins is talented. I think he can work out somewhere else. Um, but his time in D.C. is done, especially with Kyle Allen starting to play well. I know it's against inferior teams with the, the Giants and the worst defense in history, the Cowboys. But, um, yeah, it, it's time to move on from Dwayne Haskins. I think it's better to move him now than just wait and keep him on the roster because he could do even more immature things or, or things that, you know, off the field that can be a problem. So I would just move on from him. I don't think, you know, waiting until the offseason is going to make his draft stock any higher. I, I just don't see it. So there's some teams that I see that we could trade with is, is the Atlanta Falcons. They have two fifth-round picks. They have two sixth-round. Actually, the Falcons have three sixth-round picks. So they have some expendable picks. I think for Dwayne Hassis, you would probably get in that lower tier, the, the day three picks, you know, fifth-round, sixth-round, seventh-round picks, maybe something like that. I don't see us getting a third or a second like Josh Rosen. Um, so you just got to, you know, Matt Ryan's what, 34, 35. And he's got like, I think he has two more years on his contract after this year. Um, you know, he can learn under Matt Ryan, his talent around him with Julio Jones, uh, Calvin Ridley, you know, Todd Gurley is a good running back. So they have talent. They have offensive talent in Atlanta. So and Dwayne has for him to be successful. He has to have talent around him. He cannot have just Terry McLaurin and, you know, guys around him that are, you know, journeyman like a Dontrell Inman or Isaiah Wright and Cam Sims. He has to have proven talent around him. You know, it is what it is. He he has to have established talent around him at the wide receiver position, at the tight end position. You know, so that that's what he needs for him to be successful. Another team that he could be successful with I see is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have six round they have two six round picks and three seventh round picks. So a six and a seventh would work for me. Two six from the Steelers. Big Ben is getting older. I think he's 34, 35, something like that. He can learn behind Big Ben. They're looking for somebody to replace Big Ben. Maybe Big Ben plays two more years after this year since they are having a great season in Pittsburgh. They have a good defense. And once again, things around him in Pittsburgh would be easy for him to be successful. They have Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know if he's going to be there next year because he's a free agent, but they have Chase Claypool. They have Deontay Johnson. They have a good tight end. They have good running backs. So everything's perfect again. Uh, the Patriots is a team that I could see us trading him to. They have a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick, and two sevenths. Uh, we know how Bill Belichick is good with quarterback, even though it's not really working out with Cam Newton so far. But I could see a, a trade to the Patriots. Maybe they could get him straight. Uh, they do have Stidham over there, and they do have Brian Hoyer. So they do have a couple quarterbacks. Um, so those, those are really the teams that I see. Maybe the Chicago Bears. I'm going to see what draft picks they have. Um, but Trubisky is a bust. He's not going to be there next year. Uh, Nick Foles is there. So, hey, maybe he could sit behind Nick Foles. So uh, I would I would think those four teams, Falcons, Steelers, and Patriots, uh, the Bears have two fifth, two fifth round picks and two seventh round picks. So those are the teams that I see in a trade scenario for Dwayne Hadsons. Now let's get to the trades that we can make 
if we're going to be buyers, if we're going to try to win some of these games. And I, I think even if we don't trade, I think a lot of these games are winnable. Giants game is winnable. Uh, but I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself because we lost to the Giants. So we are definitely in the in the, in the the NFC least hunt. We were a half game behind Philly. So we, we have a legit shot to win the division. I, I look at the Marvin Jones Jr. from the Lions, the wide receiver. Uh, he's six foot two, 199 pounds. Uh, he's had a productive season. He had a productive season last year. This season, not so much. He's just he's a really good number two receiver. We need somebody to help out Terry McLaurin. We need um, more established talent at the wide receiver position. We just need more. We need more guys that can that have produced, you know, in the league. You know, we gotta get we gotta get all the attention off of Terry. We need to help Terry McLaurin out. And uh, if we can get another another two, it doesn't have to be uh, an elite receiver, but somebody who's actually a, an established veteran that has done something in the league before and that just has the experience. Marvin Jones Jr., 779 yards last year in 62 catches, had 1,000 yards receiving in 2017. Uh, this year, played six games, 19 catches for 226 yards. So he hasn't really played up to his abilities. Uh, it's been an underwhelming season. He had nine touchdowns last year, too. He, he had a really good – Marvin Jones is solid. He's really solid. So I think the compensation for him would be a fourth or fifth-round pick. The Lions might want a third, but I wouldn't go that far. I would go as high as a fourth. I'd probably do a fourth for uh, Marvin Jones. I would do a fourth for him at the highest, fourth or a fifth. A lot of people are teetering around that fourth, fifth round range. Uh, so I, I'd probably do it. I'd probably do it. <laughs> I, I might do a fourth. And you look at his contract, he's a free agent this summer or this all season in March. He's a free agent. So it's, it's a guy that you kind of want to bring back. He is 30 years old, so he might not fit the timeline, but the guy's talented. He's producing a league. He produced with the Bengals years ago, so he's solid, man. He's definitely an upgrade over Dontrell Inman. He's an upgrade over Cam Sims. He's just better than those guys, so, I mean, I, I think he's worth it. I really like him a lot. Uh, Will Fuller from the Texans, he was a former first-round pick. Um, the only thing about him is just injuries. Injuries. He, he's having a really good year so far. 31 catches, 490 yards. He's on pace for uh, near a thousand yards has five touchdowns already uh, with the Texans last year he played in 11 games had 49 catches 670 yards and three touchdowns so the guy the guy's produced he hasn't you know had a thousand yard season yet hasn't even had in the 700 yard season yet only thing about him is just injuries you know he played in seven games in 2018 played in 11 games in 2019 had a torn ACL one year played in 10 games in 2017 Hasn't had a full 16-game season, so that's just a knock on him. And he hasn't had nearly under a thousand-yard season, so he's a speed guy. He can take the top off the defense. He would be a great number two. I'm just looking for a number two receiver to 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 to, to Terry McLaurin. I think he's a number one in my opinion already. I think he's produced like a number one receiver. He's on pace. Terry McLaurin's on pace for a thousand yards, and Terry McLaurin is a shoo-in for a Pro Bowl receiver. So I think Will Fuller would be a great compliment to Terry McLaurin. Former first-round pick, ran four three forty. So, so the guy has elite speed. I mean, he can take the top off the defense, and he can force some pass interferences here. So I, I would love to see a trade for that. For him, John Ross is another guy. Uh, Will Fuller, I'll probably give up no more than like a fourth or fifth as well. A fourth or fifth because of the injuries, you know. Um, can he really stay healthy for a full 16-game season? That's, that's a big big question mark for Will Fuller. Uh, next is John Ross, another wide receiver, first, and former first-round pick. A lot of Some people call him a bust. I don't really think he's a bust. I mean, he, he was having a good season last year in 2019. 28 catches for 506 yards and three touchdowns. He had seven touchdowns in 2018, but only had 210 yards received. But had seven touchdowns. That's crazy. So the, the guy, he, he's put up some numbers here and there. Last year, or this year so far, he has one catch. Uh, yeah, seven, actually, two catches for 17 yards. So he's really fell out of the offense in, in, in Cincinnati. So I would only give up a six. I mean, we know... He ran a 4-2-40, was, you know, ran the fastest 40 time in the history of the NFL. And that really hyped him up and pushed him up to a first round pick. Maybe he was overdrafted. It looks like he, he has been overdrafted, but he'd be a great speed guy. I know we just signed Robert Foster or AKA Robert Faster. We have Steve Sims coming back, so it's kind of repetitive, but I think you can you can always use speed guys. You look at Kansas City, you look at Kansas City with all the speed guys they have. So, you know, we're no, we're nowhere near Kansas City, but you just look at their roster. They just have, they have speed all around at the wide receiver position. So I would love to duplicate that some way, somehow with the speed. So John Ross would be a sixth or a seventh round pick. Nothing higher than that. I would definitely not give him a fifth round pick. In his contract situation, he will be a free agent in March as well. Same thing with Will Fuller. All these guys are going to be free agents. So there would be kind of, you know, not salary dumps for the other teams, but just getting rid of guys that, you know, John Ross has kind of been a first round disappointment. So they would give him up. Maybe even give up Ryan Anderson, you know, a, a guy who's been a disappointment. 
for another guy who's been a disappointment, just do a swap. Second round pick, disappointment for a first round pick, disappointment. Ryan Anderson for John Ross. I don't know. And, and the Bungles, the Bengals just traded Carlos Dunlap to the Seahawks. So um, another trade I could see happening that I that actually probably won't happen is probably Ryan Kerrigan to the San Francisco 49ers. They do have a fourth round pick. That's, you know, if you want to get Ryan Kerrigan, you have to you have to give up more than a fifth round pick. You look, the Cowboys traded Everson Griffin. They got a sixth round pick back. The Giants traded Marcus Golden. They got a sixth round pick. So sixth round pick is, is is not worth it for Ryan Kerrigan. That's 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 you know that would be a steal for the other team. I'd rather just keep Ryan Kerrigan than give up give him up for a sixth round pick. Honestly, it would have to be at least a fourth or third round pick. And I don't see a team giving up a third or a fourth Ryan Kerrigan. You know, you look at Montez Sweat. He was evaluated for a concussion in the Cowboys game, and Chase Young had a groin injury. So you just need depth at that position, in my opinion. And I know people want to be sellers and they think about the future, but you know, if we, if we really want to make a legit run for this NFC least. I would keep Ryan Kerrigan. I really would. And like I said, you know, he would be a great he'd be a great insurance policy for uh Chase Young and Montez Sweat. You know, if they do get injured, knock on wood. Uh Ryan Kerrigan is still producing. He has four sacks on the season so far. Um and then another guy would be maybe David Njoku. Um he he's had some injuries. He's been nicked up so far. So the most I would really give up for him, honestly, would be a fifth round pick. He just hasn't produced and put up the numbers. Um, so far in his career, I mean, his best year was 2018, 56 catches for 639 yards and four touchdowns. Rookie year had 32 catches, 386 yards and four touchdowns. But you look at the last two seasons in 2019, he had five catches for 41 yards, only played in four games. And this year so far, he's only played in four games. So, um, and I know the injuries have hurt David and Joku, but I would only give up a fourth round pick, fourth or a fifth. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Uh, but we do need a tight end. I like Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas looks really good. He looked really good against the Cowboys. He looked pretty darn good against the Giants, too. That was a nice uh, touchdown catch by him, you know, the, the the on his tippy toes. Nice catch by Logan Thomas. So those are the trades I would consider making. Um, if I had to if I had to bet or guess, I really don't see Ron making any trades by the trade deadline. I just don't. And I remember I got fooled because I thought we were going to trade Trent Williams to the Browns last year before the trade, line, trade deadline. But I'm not going to fall for the Kool-Aid and get tricked again. So... All right, you guys, make sure you guys have a great weekend. Shout out to uh, the Elite Channel members once again. All right, y'all, Elder Football Team. Peace.